So while I'm doing this plasterboarding, I'm obviously coming back to bits of the insulation that I had to take off so I could mark up some of the rafters and whatnot. So it's not that straightforward because I've got to keep going and filling these little gaps with foam filler again and then going over it with the tape, the aluminium tape, and then the plasterboard. So very stop start. That's why I'm leaving the time lapse running and hopefully this video will make some sort of sense to you. But if I kept stopping to film every bit of it, we'd never get finished. So hopefully now I've done what I would regard as probably the most difficult bit, which is all this ceiling above the stairs behind me. So I'll show you that now. So you can see although it's only a small area, doing this on my own is just a bit awkward. As I showed you before, I've uh, propped these two lengths of stud timber up. And if you look here, that's just what I've been sat on while I've been doing all this. We've got the cutout for the light there. So we go up, you can see the ceiling right to the top. If you look across the stairs there, I've done this bit now which is basically sectioning the loft room off from the landing. So for once I've actually cut a board to size right the first time. I've just slid this into place and it's all I've done down the bottom, you probably can't see on the camera, is I just screwed two bits of timber into the bottom of the stud timber frame just so I can sit my plasterboard because obviously it's floating in the air. So by doing that, I can rest it on there, manoeuvre it into place. I'm just going to put the level on the top and just slightly tilt the plasterboard so it's nice and level. The idea being that the bottom of my plasterboard will be level. So when I put the sheet below and dot and dab it to the old wall below, I can use one long solid sheet with a nice flat edge which will butt up to the flat edge on the bottom of this because it's obviously a machined edge from the, from the factory. And that'll just make it nice and easy. We can put it into place, get a level on it, and then tap it into place with the dot and dab. And then the way I've measured it is the, the top of the other board will actually come into the stud timber. So the top will be secured bang on in line with this. And then we can obviously use that to level the bottom of the sheet into place. So you can see what I mean. By there and over there, I just screwed those blocks of timber temporarily into there just so I can rest the plasterboard on. Because obviously if they weren't there, all the weight would just be going straight down onto the stairs. I'd never be able to do that on my own. The other thing that's a bit of a pain is once this divide is in, it means I can't pass stuff back and forth. And I've already found this out because I just thought, oh, I grabbed my impact drive and where was it? On the other side. So now I've got to walk all the way around. But I mean, it's inev inevitable at some point in the project that's going to happen. But once this is enclosed, it's just going to be a bit of a pain, really. But to be fair, once this bit's done, I shouldn't need to work in that area for a while anyway, other than plastering and painting. And really, the rest of the work's going to be inside the loft anyway, so... LXT planer to shave a little bit off the edge of that. So cutting around this Velux window has been a bit fiddly because I've got these tapered angles coming out that way and then they go into a little flat bit at the back so it's just a little bit time consuming so I haven't been filming that but I've cut my few bits to shape now so I'm going to screw them on but before I did that I remembered I've got to put insulation so I've just put my foil back insulation and wedge it up around the gap there to stop any drafts around the window and we'll go over this now with the plastic board. update of what we've got done so far. We've done all the ceiling over there, all the bit above the stairs. 
I've surrounded this bit now with the Velux window with all the plasterboard. You come around here, you can see we got that side up on the roof as well. If you look, I've insulated this stud wall and done the plasterboard on this side. And as you just saw on the time lapse, I've plasterboarded this side as well. And I've just cut out the two holes for the sockets there. One there, one at the back, because in the end, I'm probably going to have a desk over there by the window. So we've got socket there. Socket there, always handy for a hoover or something like that. This one by the door. And then we've got another two up high there, which are just above desk height. So they're handy for things like printers, your computer, your laptop, whatever. And then down below, one for under the desk as well. Well, two actually, I'll probably put there. So we'll have five sockets, which will be great. And then on the outside, we've got another socket down there. And again, I find one on the landing is just handy. You know, if you're doing a hoover and other stairs, you just plug one in, you can walk your way down the stairs, whatever. You've got the light switch there. I haven't cut that out because I haven't got the dry lining box. So I've just put a circle in there for now. Um, pulled the wires or the cables through. Two cables there. You've got one for turning the lights on and off. And then you've got the other the three core in earth. So you've got the landing circuit. So that goes downstairs to the landing below. So you can operate the lights basically from downstairs and up here. And obviously you've got your other three there. I've only put them on single switches for now just to, to wire them up temporarily. But I think I'll have a, a three uh, gang dimmer plate for those ones so I can dim the lights because they are dimmable LED lights that I've bought for here. notice where you've got to add a few bits of timber which I haven't done in the past and I probably should have done it when I did the, the timber work but I didn't so if you imagine your your plasterboards coming across here because of the change in angle here I got the studs going this way on this wall and then on this one they go in this way you see what I mean so the thin sides that way and they turn that way here then this one if I put the plasterboard here there's nothing to screw the plasterboard to at the top and the same with this one, unless I take the plasterboard and I push it into there, I can screw that one into there potentially and sort of trim it out around there. But then this one, I'm going to have to put a piece up there or down there, screw it into this stud work and then it means I've got something to screw the plasterboard to. And these are little things, I haven't been filming but as I've been going along, there's little bits where I have to add a bit of timber here, a bit of timber there, you know, do some funny little cuts and... That's just the nature of um, doing this kind of thing as a, a bespoke one-off. If you're doing it all the time, you probably get used to it and you think, right, on my stud timber, I'm going to put all these pieces in first on the corner, but I didn't, so I've just got to sort of work it out as I go along. Take it a bit longer, but we'll get there in the end.
I've noticed by here, because I'm doing this on my own, just a, a little tip which um, you can use if ever you're putting plasterboard up on the ceiling. So I've just put this little bit of, um, what's it, 2x3 or a piece of timber across there, just low enough to sit your piece of plasterboard in. So when you slot it up, you only have to hold it on the top. You're not carrying both ends while you're trying to screw it in. Now, you can place this so it wedges your board to the top. But it's all I've done is put it loosely, so it's still allowing me to move it around, but it's taking that slack. So if you are trying to measure something up and you're getting a bit tired, you can just let it go and keep hold of this with one hand. So it just makes life a little bit easier. So you can see there, just holding it with one hand or with my head. The head's always a good tool when you want to use two hands. It's just holding the weight of the other end of the board. Now, something I didn't mention as well, it's probably worth, like I've done, keeping your impact drive, all the screws you need, somewhere to hand so you don't have to lean down. So you don't have to go back to the floor. You've had it, you've got to put the plasterboard back then. Just by getting two screws in at the top, you can then lift that up, put two at the bottom, and that's holding the weight for now. I don't want to leave it too long before I put the other screws in, because obviously you want as many in as possible, otherwise there is a chance it will drop off while you're messing around up here. If you're wondering how I got these in as well, you probably saw me earlier, I was marking up all the rafters, because I've, as I've gone along on the installation, I've marked the rafters. And then when I put the plasterboard on, I've kind of marked the top of the rafters, these rafters on this plasterboard, and I've marked the rafters down there. So now if I get my straight edge or my spirit level I'm using, I just draw the lines back onto the plasterboard and keep doing this. You've got to be quite systematic, because if you forget to do one lot, you've had it. You don't want to guess, because you've got cables up there, and if you miss and go through a cable, that's a lot of work ripping this back out to repair your electrical wiring, when it's not really any need to. Just take a few more minutes and just keep marking it as you go along. It is a pain but it's got to be done. And that's my battery is charged. So I'm just going to mark now from the line I put on the timber to the line I put up there. And then the other thing that I've been doing is you can see here, or maybe you can't, I've drawn a line there and that line I projected down to where my downlight hole was. So basically if I follow this line and then I draw a line between two other marks that I've put on the ceiling, it'll create a cross. And on that cross should be exactly where my hole is. The other way to do this is to use a laser level. I haven't actually got one. I don't know why. Something I should have bought years ago. I've never got around right to it. And if you set those up, they're brilliant. You just put your two points with a pencil top and bottom. When you come to set back up the laser line, I'll just put it, or you set it so that it runs from the one mark to the other mark, and you know exactly between there, that's where your downlight holes are. Bingo.